Hello and welcome to another Ford Cameras tutorial. This video will teach you how to use the Brownie number 2A camera. Um, this is an antique camera um, and it is a, lar is a, a little bit bigger than the Brownie 120. Now 120, uh, the smaller camera, its brother, would mean that it would precisely fit 120 modern day film. Now Back at that time, the turn of the century, there were many different types of sizes of roll film, including 616, 620, 113, because the cameras had many different size cameras that took roll film. Modern day, we basically only have two options. You have 120, or you can get B&H cell 620, which is the same thing as 120, uh, but the spool is a little bit smaller. Um, that's another tutorial we could talk about. But today, notice the difference. Our last tutorial, we spoke about this camera. Um, and now we're going to talk about its bigger brother, the 2A. So let me put this on the side. You'll notice that if the camera's bigger, actually, the negative size is going to be bigger. And because of that, it doesn't quite fit this 120 film. you notice there's a gap here. So one possible solution, and my favorite solution, is to go to your local hardware or grocery store and buy a sponge. So you might be saying, why would I want to get a sponge? Well, you might have guessed already. <clears throat> You'll see this, I cut out a little piece of the sponge and that's going to fill in the gap for the camera. Some cameras might need two pieces of sponge and this one could use one. So we're going to talk about how to use this camera, how to fill in the gap, and how to correctly count how many photos you've taken with this camera. So let's get started. This camera is very nice because the viewfinder is very easy to see. So this is the top of the camera, and you would hold the camera waist level and look down into the viewfinder and frame your photo. Now there's two of them. There's one on the top, and you could take horizontal photos, and there's one on the side. So you would look in there or in there to take your photo and frame your photo. The other thing is that's very nice about this model, unlike the smaller brother, is that you could change the aperture on this camera. Um, if you have nails or you could, if you don't have nails like me, I use a little bit of a screwdriver. You kind of just pop the aperture up and it comes out and every time it clicks, the aperture gets smaller. So right now I'm at the smallest aperture and I push it down clicked, that's the next smallest, and then last, it's the biggest aperture. Um, another good feature is if you want to take a nighttime photo or long exposures, which is called bulb mode. If you have a DSLR or SLR, bulb mode is, you probably know a lot about that. Um, and you could do that on this camera. So again, I don't have fingernails, but if you did, it'd be easier. So you just take a little screwdriver and you pop this top notch, and that means that when you take a photo, it holds it holds the camera open until you manually close the lens. Very neat trick, which makes this a pretty versatile camera. Now, on these older box cameras, the shutter speed is very, very slow, meaning that you're going to get probably 1 40th or 1 50th of a second um, it's all mechanical, and whenever I sell these cameras, I open up the camera myself. I clean the lens, I clean the parts, and make sure everything is working. Uh, so uh, you're going to get a very nice camera from our shop. Next thing. Uh, so you might be wondering, well, how do I open up the camera? Well, similarly to its little brother, if you watched the previous tutorial, there are locks on the top and on the side. And also over here, there's a lock, a little hard to see right here, which is where you're gonna crank the film. So let's open up the camera to put some film inside. Um, so on the top, you unlock it by pushing it upwards and then upwards. So right now, I just push it and then it kinda goes on the side here, see? That little piece of metal comes out and the same thing goes for this. So right now it's on. And then I'm gonna try to push it outwards. Oops. And sometimes you might need 
your screwdriver if you don't have fingernails like me just to pop it out so I'm gonna do that because I really don't have fingernails and the last thing that's important to take the inside of the camera out would be to to rotate this but pull outwards counterclockwise just like I'm doing right now so now once that pops out you'll know that you could unlock your camera and the inside will come out so we could put film in the camera so they were you could remove them from each other and I'm gonna put the back on the side for now we're gonna focus on the inside of the camera um, and there's some features I like to talk about so on this camera the take-up spool will be on the bottom so you need to know that when you look on the bottom there should be a spool sometimes it'll be on the top on the bottom on an older camera but on this one's on the bottom the other feature that I'd like to talk about is this take-up spool right has two sides so we're gonna unlock it so you'll notice that there's a little lever in here on that pushes the metal outwards so we're gonna do that and you're gonna get your spool on an antique camera the spools are not plastic because plastic didn't exist so they're metal or wood um, but take care very good care of them because it's important that you have this spool this is where your film is going to go and this is how you're going to send your film out to be processed on the spool so we have that and you'll notice on the spool there's two sides there's a thin there's a long thin side and then there's a smaller side we're going to rotate it to the long thin side here we're going to take our roll of film and the film comes in a package like this and in a box kind of like this I like to use Kodak because it's an amazing film. They have two different types of black and white. One's called T-Max. It's a newer film and it's sharp images. And then the classic, which I have here, is called Kodak Tri-X. Now, I like to use 100 or 400 speed film just because it's pretty versatile and I take sh shots outside, but um, 400 probably the best, uh, I would say. So Tri-X, very good film. Um, and we could do another episode where we talk about film types, but right now we're going to focus on the camera. So, your film, once you unwrap it from the package, it's going to look like this. And there's going to be a piece of tape on the film. I took mine off already. Um, you just use your fingernail. Uh, you could do this in subdued sunlight, meaning the shade, but don't do it directly under the sun. Um, it's okay in your car or in, you know, in your house. That's fine. So... I also want to point out that on this metal spool, there's two sides. There's a round side for a hole, see? And there's another side, and sometimes it's the same, but there's a round side. And then the other side, I want, this is the side of interest. So you want to notice that there's a flat part and there's a round part on the inside. Well, you have to be aware of this. Why? You might ask. Well, wherever the lock fits in, see this? will fit in the flat side so you need to make sure that you're rolling your film so that this part will go here wherever the lock is so be careful um there are many times where even i have made that mistake and i had to put the film back in again because it couldn't roll so make sure otherwise it won't lock your camera won't lock back in so we're going to roll up the spool so i'm going to take this piece of paper out be very careful not to let the whole thing go off. You just want to take this end and you're going to fit this into the other spool on the flat, on the long side into, see, the other side of the spool. And you're going to roll it a little bit onto the other spool so that you have two spools kind of like this, like a scroll, okay? So this metal one, the large one is going to go back on the bottom. So I'm going to put it back inside until it locks. See, there's a piece of metal, a little piece of metal sticking out. It should fit right into, oop. See, I actually made the mistake. It should be the other way around. Oopsie. So just got to make sure, see, flat side over here. So I made my own mistake. It's really okay. I do this all the time. Sometimes it's a little confusing when you do it. So let's put the film back inside until it goes in. Okay, cool. Roll it again. All right. 
Now we're gonna put it back inside. So this is a good, actually, a good exercise. You know, you're gonna get a lot of practice doing this. And make sure that it locks, see? Film goes in, the hole, bam, it locks. There you go. And now you'll see, just to check, you'll notice that this area here is the flat part, right? And we're gonna slowly and carefully roll the film around the back of the camera to the other side. Now, many times you would like to have this arrow aligned to the other side, but so we're gonna try to get the arrow. See this arrow here? We're gonna get it to this side of the camera. So sometimes you gotta give yourself some time to do this. So unroll a little bit and don't unroll too much, right? So that it aligns. And now we're gonna roll it. Keep your finger on here so that it doesn't move. It's not an exact science, right? But we wanna pop it in here. You'll notice, right, that maybe one side will fit, but now we have this gap. Well, that's where we need to have our foam, okay? Because this is an older camera. They didn't use this film in this camera, so we have to be a little smart about it. And we're gonna lock it again, right? Use our fingers and give yourself some time um, don't be in a hurry. It's better to be right than wrong. So now should be locked. Okay. Okay. Make sure that the spool is good and it's nice and snug. Snug. You might want to use another piece of foam or another piece of um, sponge just to make sure it's in there. Right now I'm just going to use one, but you may want to use two. It depends, right? So now it just to show you it went all the way around and we're ready to take photos okay so you may think wow i'm about to take photos of the antique camera this is going to be cool so let's put the camera back together so one end feeds into the other just like this and be gentle with the with the film and the camera right because it's over 100 years old if you were 100, you want to be handled gently, and then you're going to lock it on the top and the bottom, right? And the metal parts, okay? And you're going to be very gentle, but you're going to push in, but you're going to rotate this counterclockwise until it clicks, until it goes all the way down. And it should go down. See? Now it's going down. All right. Now, you're going to say to yourself, well, how do I know where I'm on photo one? Well, I did a little investigating. It could be a little tricky, right? Because in the other camera, it was the precise size of the film. And so photo one, photo two would align with the red box. Now here, don't trust the red box because the negative is so big, it wouldn't align with the film. So you're gonna have to do some counting. So to get to the first, to get to the first photo, I rotate this half, half counterclockwise 17 times. So count with me. One, two, three. Oh, see, I made a mistake. Now it's locked, right? I noticed back here, this is a fail save, by the way. So if you notice nothing's happening here, nothing's moving because it wasn't completely in. So now I have to do it again, sorry. So one, see now it's rotating. One, two, half turns, right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 13, 14, 15, 16, and then the last one, 17. Okay, now we stop. We're ready to take our first photo, okay? So to take a photo, you're going to hold it waist level, look down either through here or hold it waist level horizontal, look down through here. And then this over here is our shutter. So all we have to do you could set the aperture and so on and so forth if you want, but you could really just kind of take a photo. Once you hear a click, you took a photo, okay? And then we're gonna rotate it for every photo after that, five half turns. So 
the next photo. Ready? Photo number two. One, two, three, four, five. Stop. Take a photo. Bam. Pressing down and then five again. One, two, three, four, five. Photo number three. Took a photo. You could do it upwards, right? It will be up, down, up, down, right? Um, just as long as you press it or up or down, you're going to take a photo. Now, this camera will take large negatives and you're going to be able to get approximately five photos. It's not a science, so maybe you pushed the, um, turned it a little bit more than you should have, right? Maybe sometimes you might make a mistake, it might overlap, but we'll do the best you can, right? And you're going to get some cool images on this. Um, and so five photos, so right, that was the third one. One, two, three, four, five. Bam, photo number four. One, two, three, four, five. Photo number five. That should be the last image. Now we're going to, now we're done with our images, we're going to completely rotate so that the film from the top has gone through and is now collected on the bottom. And then we're going to take it out. So now we just keep rotating until we're done. And listen, you probably will hear the film come off the spool. Oh, and look, you'll notice that maybe there's some letters, so you'll know that you're done with the film, by the way. So, oh, there you go. You hear the difference? So keep rotating, and it should all go to the bottom, and I'll show you what happens. So now I give it a little extra rotate. All the film's down here. I unlock it. Again, if you don't have nails, I just kind of... Just be careful, right? I pop it open with my screwdriver a little bit. Um, just be careful because it is an antique. And then you, to open it, again, you pull out, but you rotate counterclockwise and the knob comes out and you're ready to take your film out. So just be gentle. Oh, no more film on the top. That means that everything went to the bottom. And you'll notice that the film changed color. It's now a gray, which means you're done with the roll. So you're, it has a piece of tape, you're gonna put a piece of tape over it. The tape is built into the roll, or if it broke off, you could use your own tape, and you're ready to take this, right, to your local darkroom or do it yourself to develop it. Um, and I can give some suggestions about that, but it's gonna take cool um, photos, and just put this, again, in subdued light. Now that you have a little extra on the side here, some light might leak in, so, I would remove this maybe in a dark room and then put it in someplace dark so that it doesn't get exposed, right? So you don't have any crazy light leaks on your photos. Just be careful about that. Well, until next time, uh, adios, bye-bye.